<clears throat> okay, guys. Well, aloha and welcome to our next little view on the centers. Today, the awareness centers. And isn't that great? Now, see, the, the <laughs> last year, I remember everyone really had a fit. When, or the, the people that when we got here and they realized, you know, if you don't have one of these, yes, you have no awareness. Now, what's funny is that sounds like a bad thing. <laughs> And it actually turns out to be a real gift if you get it, that uh, you don't have any of these fixed fears. Now, yeah, you do take in fears and amplify them in your body through the openness, but, you know, it's not like you've got these things fixed like I do. Like survival fear is like, I, I'm, it's there and there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, it's just all. So we will continue. Remember that we have nine centers and four views of each of those centers, you know, defined or undefined. They can be healthy, they can be unhealthy. That we do have qualitative differences, you know, the head and the root, pressuring everything else in the body graph to get to the throat. You know, we've got three awareness centers. That's what we're covering today. There are four motors, the root sacral, solar plex, and ego. And two voice centers, the the throat obviously for expression and the sacrals makes this, you know, energetically opening aha uh -huh type of sound or frequency that often does get expressed uh, that when it when it accompanies that response. That's the easiest way to say that. Hopefully you guys get this open center, undefined center, defined center. Right. And and a lot of times people will call undefined centers. They'll say I have an open whatever. So it's not like this is some vocabulary game that I'm I'm trying to play with you. But this is sort of really technically, you know, with there's no gates, it's an open center. If there are some hanging gates, it's undefined. And then, of course, defined. That everything is trying to get to the throat for expression, that we do live in a compression chamber as humanity. And uh, that was the lecture, I, more of the lecture I did yesterday. And those that didn't get it, we'll get it to you if you want it. <laughs> if you're not sick of hearing about this yet. <laughs> but it really that everything's built on this construct of, you know, life itself being pressured from these two places, whether you have it or not. That's what I keep trying to get to you guys. It's like, you know, yes, your chart is your chart, but you have all of this going on. We all have all. That today, you know, we're going to look at the awareness centers, you know, survival in the moment, the spleen, anxiety over all time, the ajna. It's actually shocking how many <laughs> defined ajnas we have. We're going to see that in a second. And that was a good view. Thank you, John. That was a cool thing to do. Um, and then nervousness in a wave if you're emotional. That, you know, here are these four motors and these motors are putting either available for or are putting an energetic output um, out always or available to always if they're turned on. If not, what are you doing? You're trying to pressure yourself through these things. Okay. I got it down to three minutes this week. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Everybody clap. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> All right, we'll let them play. <laughs> Thank you, Luca. <laughs> yeah. Your repetition for the teacher helps too. Um, okay, so we'll begin our look at uh, the awareness centers today with the splenic center, you know, and this is the oldest awareness center, right? It's about intuition, instinct, and health. Um, I know living as a splenic, you know, through splenic authority, you know, not only in my life before human design, but coming to understand it much more consciously uh, through the process of human design. And now, you know, well over a decade into letting, doing the best I can to let that make the decisions in my life. One of the things I really see is just how much faster I am than everybody or everything around me. It's like, it's almost as if I'm living a few seconds ahead of all of you. And I don't mean that as if it's some sort of gift. It's just, and, and it's only milliseconds. Honestly, it's milliseconds. But I see things happening way before they happen. And, and way before it is a relative comment, okay? 
But remember, as soon as you came into a bioform and to incarnate, right, incarnate, as soon as you were packed into the meat, imprinted, dude, you were aware that you, for 60 to 90,000 years, you've been someone's lunch. And that I think it's 20 or 40,000 babies an hour don't live. So just the, I'm just saying the human experience is that the, it, the existence is a very fragile thing. At some level, we all understand this, okay? So we'll get into the, this a bit more. Now, one of the things you're going to run up against, <clears throat> and we'll get more into the biology, you know, later on in, in, in rape cartography, but um, one of the things, the very first things you're going to run into is people are going to go, people with any anatomy background are go, you know, our the spleen in our chart is not where it is in the human body. It's not. In the human body, it's it's like here, you know, or something. And, um, uh, and then on our chart, it's somewhere else. Or wait, I got it wrong. Anyway, <laughs> it's not where it is on the chart. And people will, will, will bring that to your attention. And your immediate answer is yes. You know, in human design, when we say spleen, we're really talking about the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system runs through 30 or 40 percent of all the cells in the body. It is almost like a light body within the body. It's like little noses and ears and tongues that are all over the cellular structure of the body. So for us, spleen is not a place in the body. It is literally a light body within the body. And it's much quieter than the mind or the emotions. It's much quieter than, oh shit, just about everything. <laughs> And I have some funny stories I might tell at some point about really, I mean, things where I pulled over and wrecks happened and situations where I, you know, it, it, it is an amazing awareness, you know, that I never fully understood. And now it's like, wow, I really get it. And it's kind of scary, guys, to understand that, like, okay, I never know until now what's happening. Never. Okay, I am splendid. Right? I mean, there's a very existential way of living, you know, in the mind is trying to go into the past and the future, da, da, da. and it's like, no, you, dude, if you're not here, you're lost. And then it's scary and it's relieving at the same time because it is a survival mechanism. Okay. So the unhealthy defines <laughs> Now I am going to tell a little story back. Dude, there was another human design teacher. Let's just say that. Splinnick came to Kauai, was walking along my secret little beach that I had taken another human design person to. It's not, it wasn't that secret. And, uh, and I asked him not to bring anybody there. So when I saw these two walking down the beach, I was already pissed. <laughs> you guys can probably imagine that's hard, a hard place for me to get to. I surfed on a wave, they were walking like in knee deep water, and I surfed from a, on a wave from the outside all the way to the, almost to the shore break, like where my fins were dragging. I was within a foot of hitting this guy, and I turned around and kicked out of the wave, if you know, just till the, it was by then a really small wave, and I just flipped out the back side of it and started paddling back out. The guy never looked up. I just looked over at these two guys, and they're human design guys, and they're just cranking in their minds. Do, do, do. And I'm like, wow, dude, that's trippy. Here you are, an expert. And, and I'm not saying that I don't get lost in my mind, but I came within a foot of hitting this guy with my surfboard. I was trying to get their attention. <laughs> Maybe not in a good way, but in my Hawaiian way, get the fuck out way. But uh, they didn't even see me. And I was amazed at that. Anyway, I don't think anybody's going to pull that with me. <laughs> <laughs> the snake tried the other day. <laughs> but if you're not tuned in, it's really trippy. You really got to be tuned into this frequency. And what I say, see is that even though I get lost in my mind all the time, continually, that really this has become the operational frequency. So I don't see a bear sneaking up on me. Yeah. Does Maya have a question? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Maya, if you have a question, go ahead and type it in, if you can. Um, or if you did that on accident, let us know. So the healthy, did you not change the slides? I did not. 
You did not. So we have both? Uh -huh. Okay. Well, this is the old picture we were using. <laughs> the healthy defined split. Because it is, you know, like most of my life I've spent in this, uh, in pursuits that absolutely demanded, like in the now presence. I didn't know that's what I was doing. I didn't know that I was drawn to those things. They were just the things in my life. But it was, I was constantly in these situations where if I was to blink or think, I could die. You know, you can't think while you're taking off on a 20-foot wave. I mean, you, those, you can't do it. You can't think while you're jumping out of an airplane. I mean, it's not that your mind isn't there. Um, um, do you want to read the question? Mm -hmm. she's here? Want, yeah, she wondered about the spleen. Hers is defined, and she's noticing she doesn't move unless she's in real danger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the moment. Yeah, in the moment. Yeah. I mean, your authority for your life in particular, Maya, maybe is emotional, like navigational. And, and guys, the other thing I want to be clear is uh, you guys all have this survival mechanism in you. You do. You have it. So don't think you have to wait out your wave if, if a brick is falling. You can move. <laughs> Define spleen or not, you know. I may move a little quicker, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, the reality is that that's not where you make your decisions from. That's all. So I hope that helps. Yeah. I, I was thinking for that other slide, the lunch one, Yeah. that really is not necessarily strategy and authority, but really more body. You know, if you're in the body, yeah. I think I would change the word to that. <laughs> We're redoing the presentation yeah, now? Yeah, Okay. <laughs> Welcome to It's Not Good Enough Central. <laughs> So, that, you know, in my joke the other day, you know, I mean, I was on the trail walking. You know, I think I shared this with you guys the day after it happened. But I was I was on this trail walking. All of a sudden, this snake comes like, I mean, it's basically falling down the hill. It, it, it's not in control either. It's not trying to attack me. But it happens to be coming right under my feet. I have no conscious awareness of me becoming aware of that snake. All I was conscious of is I was in the fucking air. She's like, and this isn't even the right look. I was like sideways, like totally like some really fucked up gay kung fu move. <laughs> Looked like a scared kid jumping, you know, out afraid of the dark. And, uh, uh, but, but dude, the, the, there was no thought in that. Now that mechanism, again, guys, you guys all have it, but it, it's actually my authority, which we're not even doing today. You know, we're not there yet. But, you know, just know that, you know, if this is part of your trip, that this very in the now survival mechanism is you. Now, it is much funnier when we get to the unhealthy open spleen. <laughs> you know, this is, it wants to be spontaneous, guys. I mean, this is one of the problems with the open spleen is that people, you know, yeah, hanging on to things that are not good for you. Yes, looking outside of yourself for security, it's all there. But, you know, this need to be spontaneous to get rid of that insecurity to just do something to get rid of the fear and then yeah does the unhealthy open spleen hang on to things absolutely it does man and i mean prying these people loose once they've locked on to something i always compared it to like cleaning barnacles off a boat man i mean you really gotta work at it and, and got you know when it was one of my first jobs as a kid cleaning barnacles off a boat you know uh, but I mean, you gotta really, <laughs> you gotta work with them to get them to let go. Um, you know, depends on others to feel good, depends on outer things to make you feel better or more secure about your life. Um, the open spleen never really feels completely comfortable, you know, safe alone, you know, it's sensitive or safe, really comfortable or safe alone. And just remember, guys, what's happening is you're amplifying all the fears. I mean, this is like, do you have intuition if your spleen is open? Yes, you have intuition. You have everybody's intuition. You know, you have everybody's fears. You know, I have a fixed fear. You have all the fears, you know. And, um, yeah, <laughs> so so they're not yours, though. <laughs> See, this is the good part, and they're talking in your mind, and the awareness part is when you start to realize, oh, shit, that's just my open spleen. And then the healthy open spleen, I mean, these guys can be some of the wisest, really, the health practitioners and, and people that can step into other people's auras and just really pick up what's off. Um, they're good at taking their vitamin C before they get sick. 
I, you know, it's a, it's very different, dude. I mean, I, I'm like, you just like, I keep going, going, going. <laughs> yeah. I mean, then when we came back even this year from my brother's funeral, I mean, you've got a broken arm. I'm just like rattled, like, you know, I'm actually basically getting treatments for PTSD and my nervous system. And, uh, but we're here doing a show. I mean, it's just, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that wouldn't have been an open spleen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just, dude, it was probably stupid. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> but we have the survival thing that allows us to do that. I mean, I mean, for most humans, you know, it, it would have seemed like pushing to us. It was like, no, it was just what was happening. But, um, but to really see that there is a, a total wisdom here that you can relax and understand all those fears are, that are going through you. You know, fear of tomorrow, fear of not being good enough, fear of life without meaning, fear, fear of inadequacy. That's Joan's favorite. <laughs> you see the genetic continuity there. <laughs> you know, I mean, all those fears are there. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is the, the, the fear of commitment, <laughs> fear of responsibility, responsibility fear yeah. of responsibility. I mean, you have them all. You don't have a fixed way of dealing with them, and you may have a tendency there in your open screen, but um, that you really see, oh shit, dude! It's like you know, it's almost like you can start doing an inventory, like you would in you know some sort of recovery work. It's like fear of this, fear of that, fear of this. You know, you're just watching your mind. You know, if it's if it's your trip, you know, it's it's a way you might be able to you know kind of get a grasp on that. So okay. You're, all right, so all right, so the logic is winning today. <laughs> you do have this in here, okay? So yeah, really wise about health things. Really sensitive to um, uh, your own immune system. Way better to be treated like by homopathically or you know with the least invasive drugs you can. I mean, me, I can take motor oil. I mean, you know, and sometimes I do. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's it, it really. Uh, is better as best you can to not to not take that stuff into your body because you don't have that strong fixed immune system mm -hmm. um, the same way a defined spleen will and it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you you know there's nothing wrong with you you're perfect you know you're just very much more sensitive to your health than um, I will ever be <laughs> I guess that's the best point. Mm -hmm. um, Um, yeah, only yeah, only switching to like the hard, harder pharmaceutical stuff if there's if that's the, that's your only option. Okay. So your defined spleen in an unhealthy uh, state, you, you're not paying attention. You, you, I mean, you're just lost in your mind, and the guy on the surfboard almost runs over you, and you don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but on the healthy side, you know, you, I mean, you, you really learn to trust this instinctual awareness. Um, Joan and I are laughing so much about like our bodies will be doing something while our minds are arguing about what's going on. I mean, and yeah, she's a generator and she's responding and I'm splinting. But there is a point in this where you start to step back from your bubble enough and you really just... Um, you just let the body do what it's doing. And I think this is true for all of you. Um, but hearing that thing, you know, and I mean, it's pretty much a half and half here thing as well. You know, 47, 50% of you, you know, don't don't have this defined, half of you do. You know? And uh, just look for the, you know, with the undefined, that you, are you hanging on to things that aren't good for you? Are you hanging on to relationships or situations just because it makes you feel better about it? Um, and on the healthy side, you know, you get to be wise about that, you know, I mean, through strategy and authority, through going to what's correct for your body, you'll have the right people in your life. Life will take care of you. I mean, I'm still struggling with it, guys. I continue to do right action. That's just the simplest way of me saying doing my trip, right? Continue to be in right action. And life continues to unfold in very mysterious ways. It's just working. And at the same time, that level of trust, man, it, it takes some time, guys. It does. So for now, just watch, right? Just watch, you know? 
you can be wise about who is healthy or not. You know, you can be wise about what things are healthy or not. And you, if you've got this healthy, undefined spleen, you know, the, being able to step into someone's auras and know what's off physically with them is is a is a superpower that um, you might see that you develop over time. But first, you have to what? You have to overcome all your fears and, and all these things that are going to drive you. Quit listening to your mind and. The first one there doesn't win, but let me know. <laughs> There's no winning, but if anybody gets there and it's easy, let me, I mean, or they actually get there where the, the fears go away, you can just let me know. And then I'll find something else to hit in here. <laughs> okay. Everybody clear on the spleen? Should we take a little moment there? Everybody clear? Okay. Um, Ajna Center. Okay. So we're beginning our next awareness center. The Ajna Center. The Ascent. Center. The, what? The Ascent. The Ascent. I don't know. Yeah. Baseline awareness. Yeah, baseline. Fear in the moment. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're going to ascend to fear over all time. Okay. We're really moving up in the world here. You know, this is the great power of the Ajna. From birth till death. Right? It's... I mean, it's it's still upset about what happened to you when you were a child, and it's worried about what you're going to do when you retire. I loved when my mom asked me about my retirement plan, dude. I was like, my retirement plan is to, I plan to live until I die. <laughs> That's my plan. <laughs> and, uh, and to see that most people are living in this, you know, what are you going to do with your life? What's happening? That these are the, you know, the, the anxiety and Anxiety is really the best word mm -hmm. for what the Ajna does. I mean, yeah, reasons, concepts, answers, ways of expressing the mental plane, those are all there, absolutely. But the one that most people are dealing with is an anxiety. And remember, this is either a fixed anxiety or it's an unfixed anxiety. Either way, it's anxiety and stress and, 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 and mental you know, nonsense. And... Um, Another thing that's important to remember here, because you'll come across so many people that are coming from these seven centered traditions where they used astrology and, or, you know, astrology is the easiest one. You know, it's like the planets are doing this. So this will be a good day for me to do that. I, I mean, that was the seven centered life, guys. I remember that's a, you know, 60 to 90,000 year. I mean, I know we have 90 here. But there's a hangover. We've only been in this nine-centered vehicle for a couple hundred years compared to 60 to 90,000. I don't care which number. It's a big number, guys. That, um, that's where the mind was here to use these things to help navigate this plane and, in, in essence, conquer this plane. And now we're going to a differentiated view on what's happening. Yeah. And half of you are open, and half of you are not. It doesn't, is one better than the other? No, they're just different. <laughs> one, you can have your anxiety. The other, you can have everybody else's anxiety. <laughs> now, this is what's funny, guys. Here's our class. And Gia, we didn't have a picture of you, but, dude, that's a lot of mm -hmm. defined Ajna people. <laughs> What are you all doing here? <laughs> what the hell is going on, man? <laughs> so, so not only do I have a class, but I have a class of people that I will never be able to change how they think. <laughs> My class. <laughs> that you really get to know this is your mental process. This is how that movie works, whether it's a logical process, whether it's an abstract process. The same way I'm about to talk to the emotional people about getting in touch with the, how their emotional process works, you, you guys have a process. You know, it's uh, you can see how your mind works. And it does work consistently, and it does have a way in which it works. Now, look, the input will be from all over the place. The things you're thinking about will change. What I'm saying is if you can actually see the mechanism itself, you have a fixed way of processing processing it's just the it's just the methodology the, the 
yeah, the methodology is like, dun, dun, dun. this is the method in which you think, mm -hmm. you know? And, or, uh, yeah. or, or the band or something, yeah, some, the frequency, who knows? Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is, this is how your thinking works. Mm -hmm. And you can get to know that, which is cool. <laughs> The unhealthy define Ajna, you know, turning that computer into the authority <laughs> tangled up in your mental process, right? I mean, guys, we, we have good minds. <laughs> They're good for anybody but us. <laughs> this, this, is, this is what it looks, yes. Gia, yeah, right, that, this is me too. And it's like, <laughs> dude, I wake up like this. This is, this is, I wake up. It is like, dude, if you have that thing to find, you don't wake up and start thinking. <laughs> you wake up in the middle of the movie somewhere. It's like, where, how the hell did we get here? You know, it's a very funny thing to have going on. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, we'll, uh, don't let the mind become your authority. You can learn how it works. You can see the gift of your consistent thinking for others. The open, you can see the gift of being able to see different perspectives for others. Uh, mind is only for others. <laughs> Do you get it? I mean, beyond, you know, I need cat food. You know, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's about the, the, the level of, 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 of authority you should get to give your mind. And don't worry, the cat will remind you. The cat's splitting. <laughs> Survival becomes important. So the healthy defined Ajna. You know, t you dude, you're just tuned into your radio frequency, enjoying the music. You know, I mean, my my music is madness, absolute freak madness. And I don't mean freak as individual, but I just mean that, dude, this thing is chaos. It is a chaos machine. It is like chaos theory versus logical theory. You know, or need to know. Some of you have chaos theory. Gia, you have chaos theory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it doesn't let let it move the body or push its thinking on others you know it's 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 like that's that's the thing and you know all of this you know all of it either needs to be you know either brought correctly through your aura however that works and you know for almost every situation the mind needs to be invited i mean there are some very specific configurations where that won't be true, but really even then there has to be some sort of an invitation for you to speak. You know, and I'm thinking of you know, like Arena's chart, you know, manifesto with the, mm. with with, with uh, you know the Ajna there. She could say, "I have something to tell you." I mean, there is that potential, but even then, you know, I suggest, "Would you like to hear?" <laughs> you know, I mean, if if you want them to listen, I don't. <laughs> If you don't want to just smack them with a, uh, a rock, sometimes it's good to just smack them with a rock, you know. Um, but you don't let your move, it's just, guys, you don't let your mind move your life. You see what it's doing. You see how it works. You come to grips with, yes, if people say, you have a very fixed way of thinking. Yes, I do. <laughs> yep. And the other thing about having a defined, uh, you know, th this defined, bro, is that you don't have to defend your mental positions. That's the area of the open ashna. You know, you get into this, you know, like my mind loves to bitch. My whole design loves to bitch, you know. And not everybody wants to hear my sharing about what I want to bitch about. But, you know, those that do, you know, it, it, it works. But I don't ever feel like I have to defend my mental position or, or very... I love being the dumbest guy in the room. Everyone wants to try to play the who's smarter game, just anywhere. Well, da 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 da. I know this, and I'm him. And the angels come from over there. This was a sign, and the the new moon is rising on the fifteenth, and we're gonna have a party. It's like, oh my fucking god! Did you know that? Da 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 da. Yeah, I, I, what I know is I don't give a shit. <laughs> and you should, my favorite. Yeah, and you should. Uh -huh. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> you should. You know. So, a bit of a sidebar there. <laughs> so, um, the unhealthy open ashna, you know, trying to be serving, arguing for a mental position that is not yours. Okay, this is where this is where the the open ashna. I mean, I see its fear. I see its insecurity. Oh my God, it thinks it should know. 
it thinks it should know, which is trippy, you know? Um, open ajnas hear the certainty of defined ajnas and know that frequency is missing in them. And and what do you do? The very first thing we do, you know, go to kids, go to school, learn the alphabet, learn the multiplication tables, learn the, oh my God, can you imagine? You know, there's nothing there. It's not fixed. It's, you know, if you have an open ajna, you don't have a mental position. You don't. You're open. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good way of saying, oh, that might be, you know, interesting way to look at that. But, and if people go, well, you change your mind a lot, you go, good. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not, I don't, there's nothing there for you. And uh, remember that, you know, in spite of what is or isn't there in your design, there's no way to obviously have an open ajna without, and have a defined head center. But just know that if you've got an open ajna, and you've got an open head center, or open or defined, it really doesn't matter, but the, oh, the open head center is there. The pressure, the fuel for you to think isn't even you. The fuel for your thought process is coming from somewhere else. That should be spooky. <laughs> the same way the emotional thing is spooky for us open emotional people. You know, when I'm cranked up on emotion, I'm like, what the f <laughs> Who did this to me? I would do the same thing with your mind. So like, who did this to me? Yeah. So, you know, do you, are, are you still trying to be certain? Do you think you should be smart? Do you think you should know you, the whole system of human design? I was laughing with Joan this morning. I'm going through, I'm on my seventh year. I'm listening to basically three sets of lectures from Raw. There's shit in there I still can't figure out. I have no idea how these people are running down the field you know, with all this stuff. Anyway, I get off on that trip. It's like, I'm still like grinding away at the, just basically at not much more than the hexagram lecture and then at the, at the hexagram structure where I can actually look at a chart and I know the values. And it's amazing, guys. By the end of this training, you may not need to ever read a line or understand the Ravi chain. If you know the code, if you understand the underlying code and it's very simple i mean there's six different frequencies of every theme I mean, at the most simple level it's like i can keynote a chart you can take all the all the human design words away from me i don't need them i know what the values are and i know what those basic structures are and um but guys that's my process there's people in here with that are probably going to be end up being you know the next generation of human design <laughs> oceanographers you know just mm -hmm. i'm going to still be teaching surfing you know i teach surfing i don't teach the whole ocean so with the the healthy open options just watch thoughts come and go not needing to be consistent on the mental plane that looks, you know, like, that's like so relaxing. Dude, it looks so, <laughs> that looks so relaxing. Really? No, dude, I'm sure I mean, it's not. But, but I, I'm sure it's not. Yeah, I, I know. I'm, but it, 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 it looks relaxing. You know, there are no permanent answers in the mind. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's curious. Yeah, I like the way you, you know, I mean, these are things you might, might get to, but there, there's no permanent answer. And you get to know that you don't have to have mental positions. You don't have to defend mental positions. That you really can be open to different ideas and different ways of looking at things on the mental plane. It's a, and, and at the same time, your mind has that value. By you not having a fixed thing, your mind has that value. You have an open mind. You know, and the other, you know, those of you with the defined people tell you, you know, your, your mind is fixed. Yes, it is. You don't have to defend that either. Okay. So the Ajna. We've got the defined Ajna, you know, uh, turning mind into the authority, you know, you know, tangled up in its own mental process, the very unhealthy defined Ajna view. In, in the healthy view, it's just like, wow, this is how I think. This is how that works for me. Amazing. Um, and you really come to terms with that, you know, and, and just understand you have a fixed way of thinking. That's the end of the sentence for now. The rest of it can be uncovered, 
as we go along in this class or through any, you know, any of your own exploration, or better yet, watch how it fucking works. <laughs> Just watch it. Now, yeah, it'll help to know it's individual, logical, or abstract. That'll be a helpful start point. But really, that's what witness presence is. When we talk passenger consciousness and witness presence and these things are being here now, even, you know, understanding that, you know, many of you aren't here to make decisions now, but being present, you can step back and you can watch. Oh, that's how my mind works. It's consistent. It works like this. Oh, it's not consistent. It works like that. That's every center, guys. Every center. And again, level of trust. Level of trust. How you, the one thing I can't teach, that level of trust that, that life is there for you. I, I, it's the, it's, it's funny because it made me flash back to another bad situation I had with another teacher. God damn it. I can't talk about anything without thinking, without running through there. Who told me I was wrong? <laughs> <laughs> but and now I got lost that that you know that it's it's the unteachable element and I don't know if if just studying more human design is going to give you guys that I think there's some deeper place in yourself that that you'll end up accessing that you know whether or not it's journaling and tearing your life apart whether or not it's not taking in information and it's just being really rigid in your aura mechanic you know, just seeing enough to where you slowly start to trust this, or there is this huge pursuit of the informational field for you. It matters not to me, guys, but there's an emergence of trust. And I have no other way to say it, um, that life is working and, and that the only thing you can do is struggle with it from here until the day you die. And the Ajna is one of the best places to do it. In fact, it's it's probably the king <laughs> in terms of that level of anxiety over your whole life. You know, um, you know the undefined. You know, it's always trying to convince others and, and yourself that you're smart and this is that you're certain or you're consistent. And and like I I joke often. Always look for the ego Ajna connection, open or defined either direction. The ego and the Ajna work together and they they work together. <laughs> That's the best way to say it. You know, your mind will engage your will, whether you have it or not, to get what it thinks it wants, whether or not those thoughts are consistent or not. I hope you guys got it. I just gave you four views there. And if not, we'll come back to it. It's, we'll be returning to that often. Um, and then the, and the undefined, dude, that you have a fluid mental process, not concerned about looking smart uh, and, or, and, or having the answers. Now, what's funny is that sounds a lot like me, dude. I'm like, mm -hmm. not, I'm not concerned with being smart, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not concerned with having the answers. I, it, 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 it's almost as if the healthy defined and the unhealthy and the, and the healthy undefined are, are very similar from my experience, mm -hmm. you know that but i also don't have that anxiety that i should have that stuff you know that's the only difference and so our camera is doing that little refocus while i'm is in it? class i've caught it a couple of times today yeah. but yeah that you don't need to try do, guys you none of you none of you have to justify your lives anymore on any on any level mind emotion shoot it's your life it's okay to have your life. You don't need to justify your life to anybody else. Simple enough. Especially here. <laughs> okay. So are we good with our little Ajna rant? Mm -hmm. I'm doing good on time. It's almost like I've done this before. It's got this weird flavor, like I, maybe I've done this once or twice. Um, okay. So, the solar plexus, <laughs> or the emotional center, right? Needs, passion, desire, potential emotional awareness, okay? The emotions are an arising awareness. It's, 
it's why we say you can't be totally clear emotionally about anything that you can only get to this place that it feels right, 60 or 70 percent. You may even want to not use emotional awareness and start to maybe even use that, you know, emotional intelligence because it, there, it is an intelligence, okay? But also understand as emotional beings, you guys are designed for confrontation. You are. You're pumping out this emotional juice. And yeah, sometimes it's really cool and sometimes it's really not. <laughs> it's true. But, you know, the difference is really, for the emotional people, is really where you're at. Like, if you're really with your emotional wave, it's fine for me. I mean, I continue to say this. It's only when you're trying to make yourself feel different that it becomes difficult. And remember, we're talking about a 50-50 split here, guys. I mean, half the planet pumping out this juice. It's like a wave machine, just constantly putting stuff out. The other half of us taking it in and amplifying. And then, you know, where the emotional being, being is designed for confrontation, you know, it's open emotional beings are like, ah, I'd just rather not. <laughs> that there are distinctly three different waves, okay? We have the, um, you know, what, and, and these are, you know, these are graphical interpretations. Your experience may vary. <laughs> What is it, those big disclaimers? You know, you may have ulcers, your eyeballs may bleed, you're, and, you might not, die. Yeah, and, and you might die. <laughs> Results may vary. <laughs> Buy our drug, you know, that's how, I, that's how I feel about this. Your results may vary, but um, <laughs> you may die. I know, dude, I don't have enough TV, but the, every now and then when I catch a drug commercial at your house, I'm like, how do they? Get, how do people still buy that after that disclaimer? I'm sorry. I'm off on my collect. See, I'm ranting about the collective. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> you may, may kill you, give you a stroke or a heart attack, but your penis will be hard. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I, mean, I mean, where are your priorities? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. We're having a. I'm having a. I'm having a. My collective judgment has kicked in. I have to let it settle down for a second. Okay. <laughs> um, that the tribal wave. You know, it, it really is. I mean, the tri all tribal stuff is built in need, right? The resources and connection, touch, is an important part of the process. You know, the individual wave is much more acoustic in nature and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very individual emotional process. Can't spike and go all over the place in a pulse, just like anything in that chemistry. And, and, the, and, the, and the one that's most like a real wave is the collective wave. And that's rooted in desire. It's like this, oh, I really want, oh, I'm over it. Oh, I really want, oh, I'm over it. You know, and it, it's kind of the easiest to understand in terms of, if you've ever looked at like tide charts and stuff, you know this is the 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 desire wave is is uh, or the or the collective wave is closer to that. Guys, we're not really getting into this section now, but it's something that comes up for you guys, and I want you to just uh, you know have it at least to, you know before we get into the authorities. The problem <laughs> from the moment you're born and you're emotional, right? You know, settle down. Don't be you. Don't be emotional. Don't be sensitive. Don't be, don't be confronting. Don't be, you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, don't, don't, don't scream if you're upset. Be quiet. I mean, dude, from the second you're born, like you can do anything about that chemistry. And then what happens is this huge suppression happens and, um, you know, that, that, that understanding that if you're an emotional being, you know, the right to be emotional. You have the right to be emotional. It's your life. You know, I mean, just reconnecting with that part of yourself, this huge piece of you, this huge piece of humanity, and, and being okay with being yourselves and being okay being up and being okay being down. It takes a while. Why? Because your mind is going to judge it. And who's really going to judge it? Your mind and the minds of others. Get off the couch. Dude, I, this is where I know we're not there. But I, I would love to be an emotional being. 
<laughs> I would. I, I don't feel like it. <laughs> Why didn't you come to class today? Because I didn't feel like it. <laughs> I mean, I would. I already drive people nuts, dude. If I had that, that would be one more weapon in my arsenal, man. Ah, oh, I just don't feel like it. <laughs> I, I would. <laughs> The right to make trouble. Yeah, the right to make trouble. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to really come to grips with it's okay with you being emotional. Um, you know, if they don't, if if so, if the if the solar plex people don't learn their way, they're prone to override their process. You know, you know, thrashing and trashing everybody in their lives. You know, and themselves. You know that oh, there's something wrong with me. You know, there's a, oh, I, I'm, I'm up because the moon's in Virgo, or, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm upset because my boyfriend didn't call. I mean, dude, the mind will take whatever is your chemistry and put you into this very, very trippy place. I understand why I do. There was a break in the pattern. Oh, okay. You put the healthy before the unhealthy. It's almost as bad as, no, dude. dude I, I was like, wait a second. There's some. There's, no. <laughs> there's a plot. Oh, oh no. Is it? We got more. Okay. Oh God. Okay. I think so. Joan gets to be right. We'll see. Okay. Um. So the unhealthy, you know, if you know, but basically, you know, if not by being with the chemistry of of your life, I mean, you end up just thrashing around yourself and everybody else. You know, you can never trust what your mind is telling you about what's happening in your chemistry. It's your chemistry. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's like getting mad at the tide for going in and out. I mean, there's nothing to do about it. And yes, if you haven't defined it, he is absolutely your authority. I mean, it's just that simple. If the emotions are divine, that's your authority. You are here to learn to use this chemistry as intelligence, as radar. As a navigational tool for your life, it's not to be questioned, why is it doing this? It's doing that because it's trying to show you a perspective about what's in your life or what's not in your life, you know, or what should be, what's good for you and what's not. And yeah, you know, when we start to talk authority, we're trying to get to 70%, you know, 60 or 70%, just feels right. You know, we'll talk more about the authority part. Yeah, you you crossed them. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, it was so funny because there was like one dude. I went through these slides several times. There was one. This is it. Must be it. Must suck to work with me. I, I say that for all the people that have ever worked with me. It's like I only see the one thing that's out of place. I I don't even see the 99 percent of the good. I see the one nail that's not in the right. Anyway, um, but I also saw that it kind of mm -hmm. hiccuped my flow there mm -hmm. a little bit. Anyway, um, open solar plexus amplifies and reflects the emotional waves of others. <laughs> Not knowing any better, right? I mean, we're really the ones, the, uh, the open solar plex people. I mean, we're really the ones that end up with this manic type of energy, you know, and, and I've definitely been there. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's not. Um, you know, that we we are true, we can never trust how we feel. Think how weird that is. Half the planet can only trust how it feels. The other half, the, the half that's actually amplifying and it feels more real to us, can never, ever trust how we feel. And we spend our whole lives, you know, avoiding confrontation and truth, trying to get in situations that are just more comfortable. Oh, I just wanted to be comfortable. Well, there's not a lot of comfort on this plane if you're an open emotional being. Um, you know, not knowing any better, open solar plex people think that emotions of the others are their own. You know, and, and we really get this manic thing, like the, the kid that's sort of happy and then the hee <laughs> and then the, the, or the kid that's sort of sad and, you know, you're crying and it's not even your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Unhealthy, undefined, keeps the others happy and avoids situations that bring up emotional nervousness. 
We were talking about this before class. Now look, am I still avoiding confrontation and truth? Whenever I can. <laughs> Unfortunately, my life in particular dictates that there are lots of situations I absolutely cannot avoid. They are correct for my life for whatever mad reason, and I have to do them. Does it mean it's any easier? No. Do I make nice and play nice? Mm -hmm. On little things, I do. On the things that are not consequential to my life, I see that I just rather not fuck with an uncomfortable situation unless I have to. I think that's intelligent. I don't think it's avoiding confrontation and truth, but you know, you can, you may have a teachers that would, would disagree with me. I know there's teachers that disagree with me about that. I, I, it's just my personal experience. It's like, yeah, I can force myself to go to the grocery store when it's busy, or I can go at eight in the morning when there's no one there. I mean, but this whole make nice, play nice, want everyone to like you, you know, just be cool and don't get mad at me. Don't be mean. You know, let's let's pretend it's not happening. You know, every time I hear a little white lie come out of my, my mouth, it's funny, dude, because I understand this. The open emotion is getting to my throat faster than I can catch it because they're little things, you know. It's like, oh, no, that's okay. It's really actually not, but whatever. I can't really. Um, but I don't live in this constant state of anxiety of like, oh, am I, am I avoiding that? Am I avoiding, you know, it's just one more place to get trapped guys. But, and you're going to experience this guys, the open emotions. I mean, there may be so much crying coming for you. You have no idea. I mean, I spent years crying about due to the point where it was like, it was just water coming out of my eyes. It's just like memory leaving my body. That's what it feels like. And it was like, are you crying? No, there's water coming out of my eyes because there wasn't much emotion attached to it. You know, for a while, there were reasons, you know, like my mind would see, oh, you're processing this, you're processing that. And Kauai, they like to process everything. <laughs> I mean, that's what people would say to me. Oh, you're just processing. I, well, I don't know. Water's coming out of my eyes. But, you know, I would see that there might be some content here and there, but, um, but there was an actual physical thing that happened coming out of my body. Now, I didn't know this, but right when I met human design, I was living with an emotional generator, you know, and then I separated from that person and ended up living in my own space on an island for 13 years or so, you know, I mean, that was my deconstruction period, so, you know, or 12 years, whatever, however, <laughs> it's Sedona minus 14 years, <laughs> um, you know, so, Guys, whether you're emotional or not, no decisions from an emotional place. No decisions from an emotional place, okay? Whether you're open or closed, don't decide when you're amped up. You guys have all made most of your major bad, bad ideas. <laughs> you, you, you have initiated on your bad ideas from, from an, an emotional place. Defined or not. Everybody is prone to do this. And just don't. Make it worse for yourself. But if you catch yourself doing it, you catch yourself avoiding confrontation and truth, you catch yourself making emotional decisions, just see it. That's awareness. That's passenger consciousness, guys. And then the healthy undefined. Okay. It's another challenge to the world. <laughs> Bring me one. <laughs> Yeah, I have a few, I have an hour and a half every now and then like this, <laughs> you know, it's not that I'm not laying in the canoe, it's just I'm very aware that there's sharks circling me. <laughs> Rarely do I fall asleep, <laughs> you know, um, emotionally quiet, uh, is that empathetic? Empathetic. Or? Empathetic, mm -hmm. yeah, empathetic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've heard other people describe it as almost empathic. And, and I do understand where you could make that jump to, um, you know, moves in and out of emotional situations without identifying them with them. Now, guys, I don't know how that really, I mean, I get loaded up with emotions. I do my best to let it move through me. I do my best to not identify with it. But as soon as that, I really get ramped, it, man, it goes into the body. It accelerates my thinking. 
Um, it creates a nervousness. And, and again, it's really when somebody comes at me and it's their trip. It's not my trip. Now, I have the unique <laughs> privilege in this ride <laughs> to have a guy that apparently upsets other people's trips on a regular basis. So, you know, I'm, I have my own defense mechanisms, I think. And, um, you know, part of that, I think, is the, actually the physical weight my body has put on. It's like almost feels like I'm protecting myself. Only in the last few months have I felt like I'm starting to actually, my body's starting to relax. I can say I've lived for a long time. It kind of felt like I was protecting myself. So I, I'm, I'll admit, I'm not, I get here, but I don't live here. You know? But again, you're not letting emotions drive your life. Okay, If you're emotional, if it feels right, it is right. If it doesn't feel right, it's not right. You get as much time as you can. If it's open emotional, you can never trust how you feel, ever, ever. The emotion, I mean, the, the sad scene in the movie comes on. I cry. I cry if I'm all by myself. It goes, boom, right away. I have no idea what that is, you know, if it's still stuff coming out of me or whatever. But don't think, you know, you're not supposed to cry either direction, emotional or not. You know, it, crying is actually um, memory leaving the body. And so anytime water or tears come, it's a good thing. Okay, so, you know, the define unhealthy, right? <laughs> it overrides or suppresses its emotional trip. The emotional beings that your whole life you've been trying to be okay. No, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm great. I'm just holding this fucking wave down. You know, it's like <laughs> everything's cool. <laughs> just... And to guys, you don't do it well either. I mean, it's like just pouring out of you. You're off your frequency. You're lying through your fucking teeth, okay? And and I know you don't mean to, and I know that many of you think that not being emotional would be like the politically or societally correct thing to do. I'm sharing with you, if you've got real humans that are worth having you in your, in worth having them in your life, they will have a deep appreciation from that for that emotional space because the other thing you get to remember as an emotional being, you're going to be so much deeper than I'll ever be. I mean, there's a depth to the emotional being, the a solidity, a solidness to it that you know, I, I, us non-emotional people will never have. It ain't happening. It's just not our world. We're here on the surface. You guys are like down deep, and it does take a while. But man, just just as best you can, let let yourself be an emotional being, please. And for all of us, it, it actually will be healthy for you and then much healthier for the people around you. Now, if those people don't like the fact that you're emotional, then they can go the fuck away. See, that's that's the beauty. Everything works out. <laughs> they weren't for you anyway. you got to find someone like me that can appreciate, oh, yeah, you're settled down, or be honest with you, hey, you're kind of ramped up right now, you know. And uh, so... Um, you know, and then the healthy gives itself over to its own internal process, not being spontaneous about the big thing, going slow, taking your time. You know, I mean, it's 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 uh, it's really an amazing thing to uh, to live that emotionally based life. I think it would be an amazing thing. I, I'm over here as a non-emotional, going, yeah, that. At first, it did look, oh, oh, I wouldn't want that. You don't know what's going on. Well, dude, I don't know what's going on either. <laughs> the only difference is the emotional people know what's coming, sort of. You know, the phone rings for me. I got to get on a fucking airplane. It's it's a real spooky life I'm living, <laughs> you know. They, they don't know in the now. That must suck. No, I think it's I think it's a good thing. You you move slow and you turn slow, you know. Now, once your direction is there, yeah, you can pour on the juice, but it's just in the decision-making process. And then on the undefined side, are, you know, are you still trying to play nice? Hiding your own truth to avoid the, the, the feared rat mothers. I wrote that. Yeah, you did write that. That's, I mean, that's really good. The feared rat mothers. That's a good one, Joe. And... Um, yeah, make nice, play nice, secret life, avoiding the confrontation. And then the other half of the plan, or, I mean, in the, in, the, in, the, in the healthy state, you know, allows, you know, I'm just going to say allows what it, what, what it is to be, you know, 
allows what comes through to pass and knows what confrontations are correct via strategy and authority. Hey, this is good. Mm. If I actually read some of this text, <laughs> this is good text. <laughs> um, you know, uh, but yeah, dude, that, that at some level that we're just learning to let it pass through. And if, if that's not achievable, because it doesn't actually seem like that's going to be a real place for me to even get to. I, I mean, I don't feel like I'm there yet for sure that I'm at least aware of what I'm doing. I'm not avoiding the big things that I need to confront. That was my only point earlier. The little things, shh, whatever, you know, unless my mom calls. <laughs> you know, here I am, this big Jedi warrior. Yeah, Jedi warrior. Yeah, my mom, oh my God. <laughs> so don't, don't think I don't have my, there's kryptonite for me too, guys. The kryptonite comes in form of my mom. <laughs> <laughs> the one person that can still push every button I have. <laughs> All right, so are we good? Cool. So we do our aloha, right? And really to remember that, guys, you are all of this. You know, you've got all of it. It's all running through you. It's happening, you know, and, and that it really is what's you, what's not you, what can you depend on? What can you never trust? And then uh, when you get those things that you can't trust, identify, you start to step back another step and you see some mechanics. And you take back another step and you see you're not doing any of it. <laughs> you take another step and you realize fucking nothing exists and it's all an illusion and, and, and holy shit, man, break out the, the, the psychedelics because it ain't going to matter anyway. All right. How's that for <laughs> an awareness lecture? Hello. Uh.